أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول النبي الكريم أما بعد رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي So today's topic is about whole grains and uh, it's not just the whole grains that I want to speak about I'm going to be emphasizing on what type of grains we should be consuming and especially focusing on ancient grains so again, to begin with, now whole grains have been part of the human diet for thousands of years. Like we all know of our ancestors eating bread. And we always, you know, when you think about the past, we always have these pictures of, um, you know, even if you think about the English olden women, they used to have, you know, these pictures of them baking cakes and baking cookies and baking breads. But then one would wonder why would somebody bake so much when it's unhealthy, right? Because in today's time, if you think about bread, cookies, muffins or you know cupcakes or anything of that sort it kind of makes you look at it as something which is not healthy and the reason is because the flour that we're using in all of these foods is not the flour that our ancestors were using it's something which is processed it has been refined and as a result of that the nutritive value of that flour has been taken out and hence the foods that we make out of it automatically becomes unhealthy to consume. So uh, like for example, the all purpose flour. So just to get the basics right, when we speak about wheat, it's the, uh, there are different varieties of wheat. There are, um, there are thousands, like hundreds of names that are given to different types of wheat. So it's not like just one um, grain that is called wheat. There are different varieties of wheat and inshallah, if I have the pictures, I can show you. Uh, the second, is when you process this wheat, okay, there are three layers of the wheat, which is the bran, the endosperm, and the germ. So when you process it, the bran and the germ is removed and only the endosperm remains. And hence, that endosperm does not have anything but carbohydrates. So the nutritive value is taken out and just, you know, the starchy part or the carb carbohydrate part is remained. And that is what is basically used in our foods today. So we call that in, um, in Urdu or in Hindi, we call it maida which is just like plain flour with which we bake most of our cakes and parathas and stuff like that. Whereas the flour which we use for the rotis or for the chapatis, the Indian chapatis, that is the whole wheat flour. That is the healthy one. But again, if it's something which you're using from the package, then again, it's not as healthy as the freshly ground, what do you call, chakki atta. The, you know, the, atta, the, the flour which you grind, which is freshly ground. And inshallah, I'm going to speak about that towards the end. So what are grains? Grains are the seeds of grass-like plants called cereals. And some of the most common varieties are wheat, corn, rice, and so on. And there are lots of them. We will, I'll show you the picture in the next slide, inshallah. Now, when we speak about whole grain, what is the difference between whole grain and just a regular, uh, or, or when we say whole grain flour, what does that mean? As I mentioned before, it has three parts. The bran is the outer shell. That is the hard covering. And that contains the antioxidants, the minerals, the fiber. Then you have the endosperm, which is the middle layer. And that is made up of carbohydrates. And that is what mostly remains when you remove the bran and the germ. And the third layer is the germ, which is the inner layer. And that has the main parts. That has the vitamins. It has the minerals. It has the proteins. It has the plant compounds. <clears throat> so as long as you're consuming the grain in any form it could be the form of flour it could be crushed it could be rolled it could be cracked whatever form you're using as long as all the three parts are intact then it's considered healthy the minute you remove these parts and refine it or you just extract the endosperm then that becomes refined grain or refined flour because now what's left is only the endosperm <clears throat> now some of the common varieties of whole grains include now for example oatmeal right if we say oats where do oats come from you know, the whole um, thing about oats being healthy. If you're buying the store-bought processed oats, which you get in, you know, those packets, those box packets like instant oats and Quaker oats and all those type of oats, which are like you just put it in the microwave and do it and you get it done, that's not healthy. In fact, I read an article which says that those are carcinogenic. And if you want, you can, I think, Google it up. I'm not, I don't have the link with me right now. But if you read about the instant oats or the, you know, the ones which are processed, those are exactly the opposite of the reason for why you may be eating it. So you might be eating regular oats outside thinking this is healthy, but in reality, you're doing harm to your own body. 
So if you're talking about oats, where do oats come from? They come from growths, G-R-O-A-T-S, growths. So again, growths, it looks like wheat. When you see your gehu or your wheat, the atta that you use for your rotis, it comes from the wheat, right? So growths, again, they're like, um, they like the seed is like, just it looks exactly like wheat. When you crush it, or I mean, when you roll it, it becomes rolled oats. When you cut it, it becomes steel cut oats. So if you're buying steel cut oats, fresh steel cut oats, then that's fine. But that's the healthiest form. If you don't have access to growths, then the next best option would be steel cut oats. If you don't have option of steel cut oats, then there are some places where the oats are freshly milled. So you, if you buy freshly milled oats, again, that's a better option. But if you want to go to the best of the best, then you just go to the growths and you can you know, pressure cook them or boil them and just have them as a cereal, like in your milk, or you can grind it into flour and make pancakes or other things out of it. And that, again, it, 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 this is when you have the whole um, grain in an intact, that's the growths, okay? Then again, the other varieties are millet, quinoa, brown rice, rye, wild rice, the, the different types of wheat berries, which I'll be talking about in detail. Um, buckwheat, barley, and then there are specific ancient grains, which I'm going to speak about towards the end. Just in basic, what, what is the nutrition that we get in um, grains and whole grains? Now, if you think about the past, again, people used to just have bread with something, right? Like either bread and butter or bread with soup, or they would just dip bread. Or we just heard of, even if you see Yasira, there are so many innovations where where when they would, um, when somebody would come on the door, they would just give a piece of a loaf of bread, right? So bread is something, if, if eaten in the correct way and in the correct, I mean, if it's made in the right way with the right grains and the flour, then it's something which is a whole food. It has everything in it. It has fiber, it has vitamins, it has minerals, it has proteins, and it has your carbs. So it's like everything in one package, provided you know how to make that bread from the right sources, from the right um, grains or flour or whatever. And inshallah, towards the end, there is a solution to how you can make your own bread from scratch without, you know, the doubt of it being processed. Let me just look at the... I'm not on the screen, so if there are questions, you can just post them and we'll do it in the end, inshallah. And I'll put the slides towards the end because I can't like do the slides in my notes at the same time because I'm doing the lecture from my phone and everything is on my phone. So I'll, when I finish my notes, I'll go back to the slides on the screen, inshallah. Um, so again, the bran is the part that provides most of the fiber in the grains. The vitamins, the whole grains are particularly high in B vitamins. And this is something which is lacking in other foods at times. So again, B vitamins, including niacin, thymine, folic acid, then they're very rich in minerals like zinc, magnesium, iron, manganese. Then again, protein is the, and we'll speak about gluten towards the end, inshallah. So several grams of proteins are available in per serving. Antioxidants. And these include phytic acid and ferulic acid and sulfur compounds. And there are more, but specifically phytic acid, we will be inshallah discussing. Just remind me in the end, I don't have it in my notes. I just remembered it because I saw it right now. So in the end, I have to discuss something about phytic acid, which is connected to sprouting your grain. So inshallah, we will discuss that in the end. Um, okay, now let's come to the benefits of whole grains. Let me see if I have the slides put up there. Okay, if you look at the screen right now, these are the different types of whole grains that we have. Again, wheat berries is a completely separate topic. Within the topic of wheat berries, there are different types of wheat, which inshallah I'll mention a few of them. Then you have oatmeal, quinoa, brown rice, buckwheat, corn, barley. Again, barley, we know of so many uh, foods from our sunnah that have barley. For example, talbina is one of the dishes where you just put milk, dates, honey, and you boil barley and you mix it all together and you have like a, like it's like a sweet, a dessert kind of food, but it's considered extremely nutritious and healthy. Again, if you've missed it, it's called talbina. If you want, I can write it towards the end. Uh, I can put it in the chat session. And it's a mixture of just soaked barley with mixing it with milk. And to, just to sweeten it, you either add honey or dates. And you can also add in some nuts. So it, it becomes like a porridge, basically, like an oatmeal porridge. 
Then you have amaranth, which is again considered extremely nutritious and ancient. So we will discuss that inshallah. We have wild rice, we have uh, sorghum, we have bulgur, we have spelt. Spelt is again an ancient grain, so inshallah I'll discuss that in detail. Again, kamut is, there's a whole story about it. It comes from um, the Khorasan wheat. So that's again very commonly used as an ancient grain. You can store the picture so I can just swipe the screen. Uh, pharaoh is again an ancient grain. It's also known as emmer, E M M E R. Uh, it's more used in the Mediterranean cuisines. Very rich in protein, very uh, rich in minerals, B vitamins. So again, it's emmer. It's basically called as emmer, I think. If you look at it in the stores, it's called as emmer. It's an ancient grain. I'll do this in detail, inshallah, in the next session. And the most important one that I want to speak about is iron corn. Now, if you see this grain, can be traced back, it goes back to 10,000 years BC. So this grain is one of the most, most ancient grains and it's extremely expensive in today's time. But the reason being because, uh, what is the difference between ancient grains and modern grains? The modern grains have been grown through a process of hybridization. So there is a hybrid variety that we're consuming right now. Whereas these grains and einkorn is the one that cannot undergo hybridization. So this is the only grain. If you read this paragraph here, I'll just read it up. Einkorn flour is a special kind of flour that is derived from an ancient variety of wheat known as einkorn wheat. It was originally found in the upper area of the Fertile Crescent of the Near East and then scattered across the Mediterranean region. The name einkorn means one grain in German. And for a good reason, because unlike other modern varieties of wheat that have their groups in four grains, it is also one of the earliest cereal grains to be domesticated and cultivated as food with a history dating back over 10,000 years. And, you know, the videos that I saw about iron corn, they say that the bread, I don't know if this is true or not, but the bread that Isa, salam, you know, they have discussions in the Israelite narrations or in the Bibles, they have discussions about Jesus breaking bread with his disciples, right? So that bread which they ate was this bread, which was made from iron corn or the other, maybe the other ancient grains that are mentioned before. So this is the original grain that people would consume in the past. And also people who actually have a good grains in their diet, meaning the real nutritious, good quality grains, then they also tend to live healthier and longer lives. Uh, a lot of benefits of iron corn. So I'm not going to go through the details of each. You can take pictures of the screenshot so that you can store it and read it for yourself. And uh, one of the major benefits of iron corn flour is also it helps, it protects one from macular degeneration, which is an eye disease. So why? Because of the presence of carotenoids. So if you want to read more about it, you can read it under this paragraph here. It also reduces allergy symptoms. It aids in weight loss. The explanation is given here because I don't want to go into too much details because then it becomes like, it'll have like you can have one session on each type of grain or flour here okay uh, uh regarding i'll just i'm just going to give you the basics as to if you're using these types of flours what you need to keep in mind for example if you're baking with iron corn it's not the same as baking with your regular flour so if you have a recipe for bread and if you're using two cups of white wheat berries wheat regular wheat that's the white wheat so if you're using two cups of that when you're using iron corn it's going to differ your batter is not going to be the same as the batter which you would have with regular flour. Okay, so those differences, you have to have separate recipes which are available online and how you can use them and how, what, what the taste is like, what the consistency, it all varies from grain to grain. So the recipes also change from grain to grain. The, the explanation for how it either prevents diabetes or how it uh, helps to those who have diabetes is given here. And there's also a lot of more explanation available online. So you can read that up. You just have to remember the name Einkorn flour. And once you Google the benefits of Einkorn flour, you will get all of it in detail. And okay, I don't have place for more slides. So I need to stop these slides and put the new ones. Just a second. Let me change. Oh, my baby just woke up. Uh, if you can pause the recording, I'm just going to get my baby outside and continue. So you can just pause the recording. So long.
Okay, I'm back. Just I'm just gonna put the next slides and then we'll continue. Just a minute. Okay, so coming back to introducing what are ancient grains, there is no official definition of what ancient grains are, but basically they are just those that have not been hybridized or modernized. Genetically, they haven't been manipulated. Um, now let's speak about the seven specific ones, okay? The first one being amaranth. Now amaranth is a gluten-free grape. So those who have gluten um, sensitivity or celiac disease, then the best option would be amaranth or quinoa. And also einkorn is one of the, it does have gluten, but very, very, um, less amount of gluten. So in case people who have celiac disease, let me just actually explain what is celiac disease because so you have um, celiac disease is something where you have an allergy to gluten. Gluten is the protein part that is present in the wheat, which makes the, when you do the dough and when you stretch it, the stretchy part, that's the gluten. Okay. And if you are gluten sensitive, then you can have certain symptoms. Some of them include fatigue, indigestion, joint pain. Some even have like an extreme intense stomach ache. So those who have real celiac disease, then they have to be careful with choosing what type of grain they want to choose. And there are a lot of options available for those who prefer to have a gluten-free diet. Mostly all these, um, the other intestinal issues that have uh, risen in the, past, in the present time yeah. is because of the procession that takes place with wheat. And as a result of that, there are a lot of issues that people have developed. And that's why people go on a grain-free dry diet or they remove wheat from their diet completely. So if, if one starts off with the pure wheat, the, the, you know, the freshly ground wheat, which is not processed and which is, you can choose according to your own body type, what type of wheat would you prefer, depending on whether you're gluten sensitive or not? Oh, I lost my notes. So depending on that, you can decide what type of wheat would you want. But if you are, if you don't have this issue of gluten sensitivity, then you can just pick up the, you know, whichever one is available easily around you. But how would you uh, use it? That's important. Okay, so I'm coming towards that towards the end. I'm just going through what are these ancient grains. So amaranth being one of them, it's extremely rich in calcium and iron and potassium. And lots of protein with it. It can be prepared like oatmeal. Or it can just be tossed with veggies in the form of a salad. Just like, you know, when you go to these Mediterranean cuisines, you have the, you, the quinoa salad. They just put some tomatoes and cucumber and other stuff that you want to put in your salad. And instead of um, putting anything else, they put either quinoa or amaranth. You know, you just boil it a little bit and put it. It's just like porridge and you can use it in different ways. You can either have it with milk instead of having cereals. And coming to cereals, we feel that these are whole grain cereals. But again, they're extremely, extremely unhealthy because they're loaded with sugar. And if you're having those colored ones with those loops and stuff like that, then it's even worse because you're consuming something which is not uh, healthy for your body. So if you can ditch the cereals, go ahead and do so because not all of them are healthy. And what is anything that is packaged and which is lying in a store for a long time, and I've said this in all of my previous sessions, anything that you see is lying in a package which is on the store for a long time, it's not really healthy because if you have real food it's not going to last long except if it's grains grains the fresh like original grains if you buy the full whole grains they can last you for months and months and months in your pantry but if you make it into flour then they they don't last for more than three days or max to max a week if you keep it in good condition but not more than that because they go rancid 
Just a minute, I need to put this down. Okay, so coming back to the screen. Yes, so I was saying that if you have um, the whole grain, it can last you a long time. Okay, now your question might be, okay, so if I want to start off this diet of having healthy flour, how do I go about with it? So if you're living in India or Pakistan or in a place where you have the person who does the you call it chakki, right? When you're in, in back home in India, we used to call it chakki, chakki kata. So you give them, you buy the gehu, you give it to the guy there, he will stone grind it for you into flour and then you get that fresh flour mm -hmm. and you make your chapatis or your bread or whatever you want with it. Now, that is one way. But what about the West where people don't have access to freshly milled flour? So the, the option that I found out was this, what you can see on the screen there. So this is uh somebody's microphone is on so if you can I'm going to mute it. okay so the picture that i'm showing you it's a grain mill it's a very small machine it's extremely easy to use you just put the grains from up there where you can see in the picture up there and not just grains you can even put pulses so you can have you can put um, beans on top there and you can have flour that's made from beans. You can put any grain that you want from up there and you, from that small little nozzle that you see down, the flour just comes out and you collect it and you can bake with it. So you see that the next picture there, that's how the flour comes out. So there are a lot of varieties of this available. They are, not ex they are expensive, but not extremely. So if you buy this, it's like, a, it's like a lifelong investment. You just buy this machine and you just, then you can have your, any type of flour that you want in your home. Regarding ordering the grains, one has to do a lot of research as to which grain you want to order and from where you want to order because if you're living in different parts of the world, there are different grains available. So those who are living in the West, they have a completely different website and different names of grains and different varieties available. If you're back home, we already have extremely good uh, quality grains back home because our regions are known for agriculture. So there are a lot of healthy varieties available. Maybe the chapatis that you're eating are already fresh uh, ground wheat chapati. So if you're doing that, then that's good. So if you are sticking to a diet that has chapatis or rotis, then that's the best thing you can do because we always grew up knowing the chapatis are healthy, provided they're from the fresh flour and not the Ashirvad atta or Sujata atta or Pillsbury atta and all those other different types of wheat that have come in packages okay so freshly ground is the key if you're having that that's what you stick to you don't move to bread unless you're making your own bread not even the store-bought whole grain bread because they have preservatives added it's not the same the nutritive value is not the same and yes they do put in back the vitamins and minerals that are lost uh, during the procession or the refining of the grains they do put in those vitamins and minerals back but they're not the original natural form which is present in the grain. So hence, if you, if your family is fond of bread and cakes and cookies, you can just say you want to buy uh, iron corn in bulk or spelt. I'm coming to spelt. Yeah, so if you, if you want to buy the spelt grain in bulk, you can always just grind it into flour and make whatever you want with it. You can make cookies, you can make pancakes, you can make waffles, you can make anything that you want with this whole ground flour. Okay, and the next slide is about spelt. So I spoke about iron corn, one of the ancient grains. Amaranth is one of them, I think, and I spoke about that. The next one I want to speak about is spelt because, again, this is easily available. It's one of the oldest cultivated crops in human history and is believed to have first been used approximately 8,000 years ago. Just a minute. Okay, so uh, the nutritional facts and spelt. Um, the only difference between different types of wheats is that they vary in their proportion of their maybe the minerals or the protein content and stuff like that. So or the fiber. So, but basically, what you're doing is if you are eating an ancient grain, you're eating the 
the the correct type of flour or wheat or whatever you're making out of it because there is no hybridization again how does it control diabetes all of that is given here in this paragraph so you can save that that's again another explanation of what are ancient grains they are those that have been planted and cultivated the same way for thousands of years with no manipulation by modern man <clears throat> some of them contain gluten some of them don't contain gluten the difference between these so-called ancient grains and the typical modern wheat found in your average grocery store is that most grains today come from a variety of wheat created in the 1960s through crossbreeding and genetic manipulation. In addition to the genetic tampering, the bleaching, stripping, and processing that modern wheat is subjected to during bread making results in a very unnatural product. And especially this all-purpose flour that we use in almost all of the cooking, that's like the most non-nutritious stuff that you can have because there's nothing in it except just carbohydrate maybe or just you know filling up your stomach so again if you if you want to enjoy your cakes and cookies and if you want to substitute the sugar with jaggery or with other forms of um, uh, sweeteners if you, if you substitute the sweet part with with something healthy and you use the original flour then you automatically have you can actually enjoy your desserts or your cakes and cookies and breads without having the guilt of consuming something that is unhealthy um what was my mind there was something i was going to mention but it slipped my mind um regarding the storage properties and stuff like that so if one buys these grains i want to show you actually a picture let me see if i can look up but if you i'll show you a picture of these grains so if you buy these grains you can put them in your containers in airtight containers with labels because they all look exactly the same so if you just buy them and keep them together you're going to have like five oh. jars with, with grains and you won't know which one is uh, what unless you name it once you have the grains if you have a grain mill the one that i mentioned in the picture i'm just going to keep that open for those who just lost it so if you have the grain mill you can even grind your groats which i mentioned which is the oats right so you can grind your groats you can mix a little bit of groats along with a little bit of iron corn and that flour, you can just add some eggs, milk, uh, a little bit of yogurt and make it into a pancake, cinnamon, cinnamon powder. And just, you know, it's like, it's very quick, very easy. There's no time consuming in this kind of stuff. You just pour it from up, it, you press a button, there's a button on the side, you just press the button and that's how the flour comes out. And then you can just do whatever you want with it. The only thing is this flour cannot stay for more than maybe two days because it's fresh. So you either use it immediately or you can just store it in your refrigerator and you know keep using it. Even the breads that are made, for example, you bake bread with this type of flour. Um, that bread is not gonna last you more than two days. Max, it will go up to three days. If after three days, you will just see molds or you will just see that it's gone bad. So this is something which you have to learn how to make on a daily basis, but it's very, very nutritious and very easy to make, to be honest, because you just have to, you're not doing anything. You're just grinding the flour and then you just put in a little bit of water, salt, whatever sweetener you want, honey, a little bit of yeast, mix it up. If you have a baking machine, which most people do have, the baking mixers, if you have that, then you, then it's even more easier. You just take the, let it, let it have the first rise, put it aside for half an hour, let it have the second rise, put it in the oven and your bread is done. If anybody wants a detailed recipe, um, maybe until I will send it to you on messenger on the messenger chat um if you have any questions you can post them in the chat session till then if i come across any more points that i've missed i'm going to add them looking through my notes so if any questions you can ask them on the chat session available right now Because I don't want to go into too much of details where the stuff may not be available in certain parts. So I don't want to, you know, mention something which is out of context. So let me see if I... Let 
there is a microphone that is on. I'm, I'm like muting it all the time, but it goes on again and again. If everybody can just mute their microphones. Okay, so anybody has any questions on wheat? No questions? We can pause the recorder till, the, till a question does come up so that we don't have um, a long YouTube recording there. So Sister Sarah, you can pause the recording here in case they don't have any questions. So the one who's making the video won't have to edit it. Okay, I have to make you the host. I don't know how to do that. Let me check. So who is um, holding the... I, I don't know, somehow I'm not getting the option of... So then who started the recorder? Let me check. Assign co-host, is that what I have to do? Right. Uh, local miller who does it for you, or if you have your own grinding machine and there are different ways you don't have to have the fancy ones the, the, they're not very expensive the the minimum one that i saw was around 200 dollars, and it can go up to 700 dollars. now i don't know what are the prices otherwise but even if you're buying something which is in the range of 200 to 300 dollars, it's something which is a one-time purchase so if we can buy expensive clothes and expensive bags and spend on you know superficial outerwear which is like people do spend a lot on clothes and cars and outerwears and you know things just to show off or jewelry, which is just something which is superficial and on you, right? Whereas something which is inside you, we think twice about spending on those things. Like if somebody wants to buy a meal outside in a restaurant, they don't think twice before spending. But if you want to buy pure milk and if it's a little bit expensive, then we think twice, right? So it's something where we need to set our priorities correctly as to where do I really want to spend my money and where I want to invest. So if this is something that you buy once and it's going to last you a lifetime if it's a good quality product and then you just need to shop for your grains, put it in and then just do whatever you want with it. The simplest thing you can do is just uh, make porridges out of it. I'll just make flour and bread and it's not very difficult to make the bread if you just look into the recipe. It's very, very simple if you have a good oven and a good a flour machine and there's also different ways like i think the coffee grinding machine if you have that I, i'm not sure but people did mention that they use their coffee grinder to grind the place where they grind their coffee beans that's where they even grind their grains so that's one option i'm seeing flour on the screen aren't we talking about wheat now so wheat when we say wheat it means wheat flour or wheat berry when I say wheat berry, it means the grain, meaning um, the picture that was there on the, on the, not the flyer, but the picture that I posted on the group yesterday, that was the wheat berry, meaning the grain, that's the grain. When you grind that grain, it becomes flour. Okay, so I hope that thing is clear. When you grind the wheat berry, it becomes into wheat flour. If you grind any other grain, it becomes, it becomes flour. The topic here is whole grain. So any grain that you buy, it could be rice, then you'll have rice flour. You mill it, then you have that flour. Rye, you have rye flour. So any grain that you take, if you put it in this machine and it comes out, 
it becomes flour, right? And then that's what we cook. We don't eat the grains directly. Some people do, but most people, they make they either bake with it or they make bread out of it or they make chapatis out of it or whatever you make out of it or cakes or cookies or whatever. I use coffee grinder. It works fine. Yeah, that's what. So the coffee, if you have a coffee grinder, then that's, the, that's another option. Most people do have it. So you can just put your grains in that, make it into flour and then just bake whatever you want with it. You see the picture there? Those, the, they have the wheat and the flour together there. So the wheat, when, you, when it's in the grain form, we call it the wheat berry. When, when you grind it and turn it into flour, then that's what you use for baking. So if one is using the packaged flours, which is either the all-purpose flour, which is extremely unhealthy, and that's the main cause of people having diabetes and all other sorts of uh, problems with their with their health and where it causes chronic problems it's because of the flour that we're consuming either the parathas or the rotis or the what do you call the naans the breads that we're eating which are made out of this white flour that is what is causing all these other issues because it's spiking up your sugar levels So if, if you don't have access to this, then people usually remove, uh, you know, bread and all these products from their diet. But if you, if, because see, you're some, it's something which is on a daily basis, you have to eat, right? Bread is something with people, not bread, but I'm saying roti, bread or whatever, something that people eat on a daily basis. So just to see to it that the main food that you're eating every day is healthy, that we're not putting toxins in our body. Any more questions? What about rice? What is which is another, yes, rice is actually, there's a myth about rice that if you eat rice, uh, I'm glad you asked that question. Um, usually people think that all oh, rice is just white carb, so we avoid it. And that's not true. If you look up, rice is sometimes even considered more better than eating all these other processed uh, bread and things because, just let me take my baby down. <laughs> Just a moment, I need to settle my little one somewhere. So when you sprout it overnight, meaning you put it in water um, for like a day, when, when it gets a little bit of sprouts, you dehydrate it and then you make flour out of it. So if you're using sprouted one, it kills the phytic acid. It destroys the phytic acid. Because phytic acid is a, is a compound that binds with iron or other minerals in your body and it prevents the absorption of iron and other minerals. Oh, there's too much of disturbance in the background too. So that's the reason why people, even if you see our grandmas, they would sun dry the grains, they would uh, wet them, I mean soak them, and then they would sun dry them. So this is, this, they did this one because it, it spikes up the nutrition in the grain and two, it reduces the phytic acid content. So even when it comes to your pulses and legumes, let's say you're making dal or you're making rajma, your kidney beans, or you're making, um, what do you call those, chole, what do you call them, garbuzano beans. So if you are chickpeas, that's what we call it, right? If you're using these pulses, the, there's a traditional way of making them. That is the night before you soak it in water and the next morning you use it. Why? Because it's soaking. It helps decrease the phytic acid content, which is not really an issue in people who don't have mineral deficiency, but, but those who do have, or if you want to benefit the most out of it, then, you, but because phytic acid has its own anti-cancer properties too. So if you read about phytic acid, it has the whole uh, thing about how it helps to prevent cancer or fight cancer or whatever, but it is anti-cancerous. But uh, if it's too much in your body, then it will prevent the absorption of iron and some other minerals. And so you, it can be a deficiency of those minerals, especially for those who are on a whole grain diet. Like if somebody is eating only grains and not eating, um, you know, meat sources, like especially vegetarians, and they may get into this uh, deficiency issue. So just to avoid that, it's better to soak your grains or buy sprout, sprouted grains. 
So yes, rice, which is pure rice. Again, it's something which is natural. It's a natural food. So the myth about it that, oh, it makes you put on weight and stuff, is not really true. Uh, I had mentioned one of the videos about it before. Her name is Rujita Divekar. So if you just watch her explanation about rice, then she, she may clear some of those doubts that people have. Any more questions? <laughs> yeah, rice, which is good quality basmati rice, then yes, it is considered a whole food. It is because it's, a nat it's in a natural form, then yes, it's it's the good food. The, the rice that you want to avoid is, I don't know whether the original rice is called hand pound rice i'm not sure of it but the key being that you avoid the starchy sticky one you know the sticky one that's the one that's not but otherwise if you're having if you're having your daily meal as rice dal and you know ghee it's, it's a staple diet and it's, it's very very nutritious because the combination of foods also plays a big role just a minute like what you eat with what also helps you uh, benefit the most out of the nutritive value. So combining certain types of food is also essential if you want to, if you really want to go deep and have the best kind of nutrition, then you have to know which food is to be eaten with what. And that's why there's this combination of yogurt and rice or uh, having rice, dal and ghee mixed together, or even the combination that I gave you before of turmeric, butter and black pepper. Whatever it is, it has to be in moderation. Just remember that. Like if you're going to have something thinking, oh, this is extremely healthy and go on having it, anything, anything in excess is going to have some kind of consequence, right? So the key is, <coughs> one, you just remember the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ where he said that the, a morsel of food is enough to keep the back of son of Adam straight. Okay, and the second thing is about fasting, keeping control on your diet and keeping your system clean and detoxifying yourself by intermittent fasting and again if you see intermittent fasting has become such a craze in the west now people have realized the benefits of intermittent fasting and we already have it in our religion where we can keep it either on mondays and thursdays or the three white days of the month so just know that you don't have to become over conscious about your food and you know get your whole life revolving around food and spend too much time in that just know the basics like for example that's why i'm keeping this just sticking to the basics like our daily food like milk eggs bread basic things that we have on a daily basis if we just know the source of what we're eating and you just stick to that and then you have your natural fruits and vegetables and stuff like that then you're already in you know on the safer side whereas if you're indulging in everyday outside food or oils again you know reuse using your oil again and again and again that's extremely dangerous to reheat used oil and i think i've covered that up in one of the sessions on what it does to your body so just knowing the basics should be enough to, you know, keep yourself healthy and prevent something major that could be caused because of unhealthy diets and foods. Okay, so if there are no more questions, we will end this session. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdika shadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Oh, there's one question here. Are flour also healthy? Uh, I think, I don't know whether you joined in late, but it depends on from how you make your flour. So if you're making your flour out of fresh whole grains and it's freshly ground, then yes, it's extremely, extremely beneficial because it has everything in it. It has all the vitamins, the minerals, the protein, all the possible nutrients, antioxidants, fiber, everything. But if you are using processed flour, which is bought from the store, then it's not even equal to what you would have if you would have it fresh. So again, any food that you have, it has to be fresh. It has to be original. It has to be um, from a good source. It has to be real food. And so if you are, because think about it, flour, wheat is something that was cultivated in the time of Adam right? So people have been having it since man stepped on earth. So it's not possible that something that Allah would give mankind would be unhealthy in and of itself unless we intervene and put in our man-made procedures and process it to the point where it's not food anymore. 
So that's the whole point, going back to traditional cooking and the traditional ways of consuming our foods. So yes, it is healthy if you uh, have it fresh, fresh flour. But if you're going to have the store-bought flour, then you rather avoid it or at least keep a control on how much you're consuming of it. Okay, so if you have any more questions, you can uh, post them on the messenger chat, inshallah. And if I get a chance, I'll post the recipes about um, the specific flowers that I mentioned. We can end the recording Bye. here. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika shadu wa nai 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 wa